The first manufacturer to announce an entry into the hypercar class when it launched in 2018, the Klickenhaus SCG007 LMH is decidedly a more svelte-looking automobile than its name. Born out of the mind of erstwhile film producer turned boutique sports car manufacturer and race team principal James Klickenhaus, the 007 is the fourth vehicle to bear the Klickenhaus name, following early work with modified Ferrari-based cars, including the Enzo-based P4-5. Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus's other projects before their hypercar include the SCG003, which in addition to rhyming, is offered as both a GT3 race car and a road-going counterpart. The SCG004, with a larger engine but offered in similar guises, and the Baja Rally-focused SCG Boot. The SCG006 was a retro-inspired cruiser that languished in planning purgatory before eventually being cancelled. A shame, too. It was a lovely piece of design work. Anyway, that brings us to the 007, which has become arguably the most recognizable of the Glickenhaus creations. Competing in the World Endurance Championship since nearly the beginning of the hypercar era in 2021, they missed the season's first race at Spa, with their debut coming at the 8 hours of Portimao. Unlike the majority of the large manufacturer-supported entries, the Glick, as I will be calling it for simplicity's sake, is not a hybrid, relying purely on burning no longer dino juice, the WEC now using a sustainable fuel developed by Total Energies, derived from winemaking byproducts, to get moving. This engine is a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V8 developed by Pippo Motors, a French company better known for their rally engines that have powered the likes of Hyundai, Ford, and Peugeot to RWRC podiums, wins, and championships, but with no affiliation to Pippo Durrani, who drove the Glick in its first two seasons. The V8 is essentially two of their four-cylinder rally engines running in a common block, outputting up to 870 horsepower. A lower power version for running in LMDH is also available, albeit with any takers at current. Originally, the Glick was intended to run a V6 Alfa Romeo engine, but when the hypercar power cap was raised from its original level, an alternate solution was required, leading to the collaboration with Pippo. It is the first engine the company has built that operates as a fully stressed component of the chassis, the rest of which is built from composites by Podium Advanced Technologies, who also worked with Glickenhaus on the SCG003 and 004. Podium also designed and built the electronics based on a stock Bosch system and leveraged robust simulation testing to hone the double wishbone and pushrod suspension. The V8 sends its power to, unsurprisingly, an extract gearbox, a 7-speed sequential this time, which then sends the power along to the rear wheels wearing, unsurprisingly again, Michelin tires. Damn fine looking wheels they are too, though I imagine they're a pain to polish up before each race. Debuting at the 2021 8 Hours of Portimao, supported by Yoast Racing, the Glick found itself about two seconds adrift of Toyota's GR010 and Alpine's grandfathered LMP1, and, as usual for a new race platform, struggled throughout the race with high brake temperatures and a clutch failure that cost about an hour in the pits. They did, however, finish, and their next race at Monza saw a two-car entry, with both of them ahead of the LMP2 field on lap pace, trailing the Toyotas by less than a second for the faster of the two cars. The race, however, did not go as well. One of the two cars retired after 90 laps with gearbox failure, and the other finished third, behind one Toyota, the Alpine, and the leading LMP2 Orica. Their first outing at Le Mans had the Glicks again at the bottom of the hypercar qualifiers, but ahead of all the LMP2 cars. And finally, the platform started to show its maturity, with both vehicles finishing the race and keeping ahead of the LMP2s. The team sat out the final two rounds at Bahrain due to financial constraints and a desire to focus on development for the 2022 season, which started with a respectable second place in qualifying and third overall at Sebring after the race was ended early due to weather conditions. Spa was less successful, with a ninth place overall finish, one lap behind the Toyota and Alpine that topped the two steps of the hypercar podium. The team and car's most notable result to date came at Le Mans. While still trailing Toyota, they managed to outlast Alpine, battle through mechanical difficulties, and stay ahead of the Oricas to claim third and fourth overall, the first outright podium for an American-based team since ADT Champion Racing's Audis in 2005. A retirement during the next race at Monza marked the end of the 2022 season, with absences at the final rounds in Fuji and Bahrain. The 2023 Sebring race was another challenging one, with a far more robust hypercar field than the previous two seasons. 
they qualified behind all the factory teams, about eight-tenths of a second ahead of the fastest LMP2 and two-tenths ahead of the debutante Van Wall. In the race, an early retirement was forced on the team due to an issue with the ignition switch that brought external intervention to get back to the pits and therefore disqualified the team from continuing after only 62 laps had elapsed. Portimao saw a return to reliability, with the trouble-free but unremarkable run. A couple of seconds a field of Toyota and an increasingly rapid Ferrari 499P, they finished ahead of one Toyota, a Porsche, and the Van Wall, but the depth of the hypercar field meant this only equated to eighth overall. Spa was a race fraught with treacherous conditions, and despite crashes by Ferrari, Cadillac, and Van Wall, the SCG007 had an again unremarkable race while struggling for pace, finishing 13th overall and 7th in hypercar, behind the dominant Toyotas, the uncrashed Ferrari, a Porsche, the uncrashed Cadillac, and the new Hertz Team Yota Porsche, which, as somebody commented on another video, does make the 4th entered Porsche at Le Mans this year, which takes their total entry to one greater than Cadillac's. Anyway. This year's season has not, so far, gone the way of Glickenhaus as they prepare for another two-car entry at this year's 24 Hours of Le Mans, but with all of the other teams save Toyota running for the first time, 24 Hours is a long race, and the one thing about Le Mans is, especially with a field this substantial, the racing is never boring. As for this video's call to action not featuring the three sacred words of YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, well, heck, I'm going to break my rule. I'm headed to Le Mans today, actually on a plane as this premieres, so wish me safe travels and go ahead and subscribe. Having never been, I don't know what to expect, but I'm hoping to be able to share with y'all whatever I do experience. I'll be at Le Mans Classic at the end of the month, too, gathering more information and photographs for the 5-Minute Guides. Have a good evening, everyone.